It started as a small board game for children and adults in 1903, but now Monopoly accounts for nearly one-third of all global board game sales. It's been around for over a century, and it's still the fourth highest selling board game in the US, behind chess, checkers, and backgammon. It's generally a wholesome game that teaches players about money management and forces them to make difficult financial decisions, all with paper money, of course. However, the story of how Monopoly came to be what it is today is not what many people would expect. In fact, how we play Monopoly now isn't actually how it was originally intended to be played. For those people who are unfamiliar or have forgotten, the concept of Monopoly is pretty simple. The board game is played with a minimum of two players. Players essentially buy and trade properties. Then they develop these properties with houses and hotels. The players can collect rent from their opponents as the goal is to drive other players into bankruptcy. Money can also be gained or lost through different rules of the game, as well as they can end up in jail. And of course, there's a lot of luck involved because players roll two six-sided dice to determine the spots they'd land on the board. The game ends when the last player is left after all others become bankrupt. It's an American classic. Monopoly players enjoy the game's cutthroat, ruthless, and greedy impulses. You may start out as equals in the game, but with a bit of good luck and better strategy, you can dominate your opponents. Monopoly has the thrill of sending your rival to the bottom of the ladder while you simultaneously rake in huge fortunes of cash and real estate. But what most Monopoly players don't know is that the game was originally the product of a passion for social and economic justice. The start of Monopoly traces back to the late 1800s, where a young woman was introduced and inspired by the writings of Henry George. He was an American political economist and journalist who sparked several reform movements of the progressive era. Before Monopoly became a Hasbro board game classic, it was first, the invention of Elizabeth Maggie. Elizabeth Maggie was born in Macomb, Illinois in 1866. Her father, James Maggie, was a newspaper publisher and an abolitionist. He accompanied Abraham Lincoln as he traveled around Illinois in the late 1850s, debating politics with Stephen Douglas. Elizabeth worked as a stenographer and typist at the Dead Letter Office in Washington, DC. She was also a writer, comedian, stage actress, feminist, and engineer. Elizabeth was an outspoken activist for the feminist and Georgism movement. She brought the struggles of women in the United States back at that time to everyone's attention when she published an advertisement. She tried to auction herself off as a young female American slave looking for a husband to own her. This was meant to represent the struggle of women and black people in the country at the same time. Maggie grew up in the era of the Gilded Age. It was the time of rapid economic growth in the United States. It was Mark Twain who called the 19th century the Gilded Age. He believed that the period was glittering on the surface but corrupt underneath. It was a time of robber barons and monopolies on railroads, steel, oil, and other industries. Overall, it was an era of corruption, conspicuous consumption, and unfettered capitalism. Inspired by the writings of Henry George, Maggie believed that wealthy landowners were unfairly profiting off the rent and labor of others. Henry George's solution was a single tax on land that would replace all other taxes. He believed that would ultimately lead to a fairer economy. Maggie eventually became one of many people who took on the task of trying to teach others what she had learned from studying George's works, such as his book, Progress and Poverty. It was then that she invented and patented the board game, The Landlord's Game. Maggie explained that it was a practical demonstration of the present system of land grabbing with all its usual outcomes and consequences. The landlord's game was set on a square board with nine rectangular spaces on each side. On each edge were circular corners that were labeled go to jail and public park. Players would go around the board and buy railroads as well as collecting money and paying rent. Maggie had created two sets of rules, monopolist and anti-monopolist. In the rules of the anti-monopolist, every player would gain money each time someone got a new property. Her goal was to show how everyone could benefit from a public tax on land. As for the monopolist, well, its rules are what we're familiar with today, wherein only one winner takes all the wealth. Maggie wanted to teach the public how American capitalism was becoming a race to the bottom with its flawed system that thrives on the gap between the rich and the poor. However, as time passed, only the monopolist part of the game was becoming popular. It got to the point where people began referring to it as the Monopoly game. And during the Great Depression, its popularity grew as it offered a fun escape for people to play with money people didn't actually have. Charles Darrow was the first to capitalize on the evolution and popularity of the Landlord's Game. He was an ambitious, unemployed heater contractor from Philadelphia. After he enjoyed playing the game at a dinner party of Charles Todd in 1932, he created his own version of the game and called it Monopoly. And even though he wasn't the original creator of the game, he sold and licensed it to the Parker Brothers. 
Parker Brothers was founded by George S. Parker, a game designer and businessman. During the Great Depression when they lost sales, Monopoly helped the company stay in competition with rivals such as Milton Bradley and Transigram. When the Parker Brothers found out that Daryl wasn't the true inventor of the game, they found Maggie and bought the rights to her patent for $500. She was happy to sell her rights because she was thrilled that her tool for teaching economic inequality would finally reach the masses. But, in a cruel twist, the Parker brothers credited Darrow as Monopoly's sole inventor in ads for the game. On November 5th, 1935, Parker brothers started marketing the game. They also began licensing the game for sale outside the United States. In 1936, the Parker brothers sold 1.8 million copies of Monopoly at $2 each. Charles Darrow became the first millionaire game designer in history as he received royalties for his work on the game throughout his life. And as the game grew, it lost its connection to Maggie and her original intention and critique of capitalism. In January 1936, Maggie expressed her feelings toward the Parker brothers when she was interviewed in a Washington DC newspaper. She told the reporters about the similarities of Monopoly and the Landlord's game. Maggie spent more money making her game than she ever received in earnings. Then there was also the lack of credit she received after Monopoly was created. Even at her death at 81 in 1948, she didn't receive credit for the impact she had on Monopoly and its community. As for the Parker brothers, they remained successful and marketed new games until General Mills purchased the company from their family in 1985. General Mills merged the company with their subsidiary Kenner, a former American toy company founded in 1946, which was then acquired by Tonka in 1987. Tonka is an American producer of toy trucks that are known for making steel toy models of construction type trucks and machinery. But in 1991, Tonka, along with Parker Brothers, was bought by Hasbro for $516 million. Hasbro Incorporated is an American multinational conglomerate with toys, board games, and media assets. Parker Brothers is now the main board game division of Hasbro. Monopoly also actually helped prisoners escape during World War II. During the war, British airmen were held as prisoners in Germany. But as part of their signed deal, humanitarian groups such as the Red Cross were allowed to distribute care packages to the airmen. These items included games and other pastimes. The Allies then took military advantage of the care packages. Hidden in the packages were escape kits such as compasses, metal files, money, and most importantly, maps. And yes, they disguised those kits as Monopoly games. But where exactly did the Monopoly mascot come from? Rich Uncle Pennybags, also known as Mr. Monopoly, is known by his iconic suit, top hat, and cane. He was created by Charles Darrow and was the face of his board games before Monopoly got picked up by the Parker Brothers. It wasn't long after his new appearance on Monopoly in 1936 that he became the infamous Rich Uncle that we have come to know. Today, Monopoly has grown to be one of the best-selling board games in modern history. It's become a part of international popular culture, having been licensed locally in 114 countries and printed in 47 different languages. The game continues to have many house rules and hundreds of different editions continue to exist, even spin-offs, video games, and other related media. Monopoly has sold more than 275 million copies and Hasbro prints $30 billion in Monopoly money each year. The coronavirus pandemic has even created another boom for Monopoly. Gaming sales for Hasbro reached a record high in quarter three of 2020. In the United Kingdom, board game and jigsaw puzzle revenues were up 240% in 2020, and Monopoly was the top seller. Like many collectible items, Monopoly has different versions that sell at high prices. These can range anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. The original 1935 Parker Brothers game only had around 25,000 copies made in production, which is why it's worth over a hundred dollars. Black and white copies of Monopoly produced before the Parker Brothers began producing it are worth even more. Only 1,000 white box Monopoly games were ever produced. There's even a Monopoly board worth over two million dollars. It's made from 18 karat gold and contains 165 rubies and sapphires and 42 diamonds. Just the pair of dice itself is worth over $10,000. While Monopoly came to be pretty much the exact opposite of what Elizabeth Maggie had hoped for, at least now she's been recognized and accredited for her invention of the landlord's game. Maggie will be remembered for her lasting actions of fighting for women's rights and abolition. In a time of inequality, she became an outspoken feminist, 
educated the public of Henry George's progressive ideas, and invented one of the most successful board games ever, all at a time when women held less than 1% of the patents.